Honorable Member for Garissa Town, the Honorable Major Deco Barrow. I think that will be your maiden speech. Maybe, okay. Yes. Asante sana. <laughs> Is it on? Yeah. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, my name is uh, Major Deco Mohamed Baro uh, for Garissa Township, Member of Parliament for Garissa Township. The name Major arises from I was in the military. I am the second Major in this house. Unfortunately, I was warned by the uh, Major Bashir that I can only use this uh, title out of this house because he has patented uh, that title. Well, Madam Speaker, as I rise as a new member of parliament and the, the first time I'm standing on the floor of the house, I also got a title from the colleagues here, some of the colleagues who gave me a title of uh, being the lowest ranking member of the house. <laughs> lowest member, I mean ranking member of the house. And I've noticed uh, many titles here have come with some certain privileges. So I accept it as the lowest member, ranking member of the House. So, and I think the, the titles have come with certain uh, privileges. So I hope in the standing orders I will be considered uh, with that title with, to enjoy certain privileges. Maybe after the minority whip or something like that. <coughs> Madam Speaker, I represent a constituency of, uh, which is cosmopolitan in nature. I had the opportunity while campaigning to have met uh, almost 43 uh, communities of Kenya, uh, all residing and uh, doing their businesses and living, uh, looking for their livelihoods within my constituency. My constituency is also uh, partly urban and partly uh, rural. Maybe 30 or 40 percent of my constituency is also a rural constituency. And then the other 70 percent is, uh, is an urban constituency. Having said that, I want to first of all uh, to thank the people of Garissa Town for giving me this honor to stand in this house to represent them as their member of parliament. Uh, special thanks, of course, goes to uh, my predecessor, Honorable Duale, uh, who is now the current member, uh, cabinet secretary of defense, for his immense contribution uh, to the constituency of Garissa in terms of development in terms of leadership. Many of my colleagues here ask me whether I will be able to fit in his shoes. Duale, as a leader, uh, a member of parliament, you all know, and I know as well, has been a very statute uh, leader, a debater in this house. And at the constituency level, he has established a good foundation for me to build on as the next member of parliament. So I thank all those who contributed to my win. And he also supported me. He was uh, honestly invested so much, uh, both emotionally and resources, to ensure that I get elected as a member of this house. Madam Speaker, as a constituency, we face a lot of challenges that in my term as a member of parliament in this house, I will be able to be be a priority for me. One of the major challenges we face now is the drought issue as a constituency. This drought has affected us, though major part of a section of my constituency is uh, urban, we really depend on the pastoralist or livestock business as a trading business for my constituency, as the economic enabler for my constituency. We have been really affected by the ravaging drought, which is affecting not only my constituency, but also uh, 24 
pastoral uh, communities or counties. Madam Speaker, this has brought in a lot of challenges for my constituency, and one of them is now we have noticed or realized that we have climate refugees in my constituency. In that, people who have lost their livelihoods in the constituency or the neighboring constituencies have been forced to move into Garissa without anything, and now they have to be taken care of by the uh, uh, agencies, donor agencies, and the government of Kenya. Meaning they are settling on land that will eventually bring a conflict among the communities living in this constituency. The other problem we are facing on the, as a result of this drought is that parents, so communities have lost their livelihoods, and that means they cannot be able to fend for their families, means they cannot take their children to school, and this is a challenge I am facing as a member of parliament. Means uh, over 100% 100 per, 100 of the transition to secondary school and university, I have to take care of it in terms of the CDF fund that we have been allocated. This is a big challenge for us. The other problem we face as a county or as a constituency is the issue of uh, education that we need to address or I need to address as a member of parliament and that is we have an exodus of teachers and unfortunately yesterday in this house we were debating on the issue of junior secondary schools and we have almost a hundred percent transition from my constituency into uh, junior secondary school and also into secondary school. This is a very big problem for the constituency. We already had a problem of teachers allocation from the national government or from the teacher service commission. Out of the 30,000 recruited teachers in the last, uh, this year, we managed only to get only 15 out of that as a constituency. We already had a shortfall in my constituency and that is an area we need uh, an affirmative action for my constituency. The other area or situation we are facing as a constituency is on issue of civil documents. The issue of passports, the issue of uh, identity cards, ID cards. Madam Speaker, my constituency, when young people want to get IDs, they have to go a very, undergo a very tedious vetting process, that, unlike the rest of the country. We need a, a, another a decision made by the, by the government on this issue of IDs. The vetting process for us is too tedious, is too discouraging for us. The other issue is the passport issue. We had a, a passport control office in Garissa. Unfortunately, it was moved uh, as a result of, uh, I will say, politics. Because it was moved immediately, the member of parliament for Garissa Township was moved from the majority leader position. And now we are facing uh, that in that we have to travel to Nairobi to get this important uh, travel document. If you, if, to bring to your notice, attention, we have a big population of Garissa constituents who go every year for Hajj to Mecca to perform a religious duty in, to, in the numbers of 3,000 to 4,000 a year. We have young people who are seeking employment uh, with NGO uh, uh, community or engineer world in uh, Somalia and the region who have to come and seek these travel documents from Nairobi. It is getting too expensive. It, is take t it takes too long to access those documents. We need this office returned back to Garissa and to serve the people of the northern region, not only Garissa constituency, but the uh, counties of Garissa, Wajia, Mandera, Isiolo, and Tana River. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you once again for giving me this opportunity and inshallah, God willing, I'll be participating in the debate coming in. On the issue that was on the table today, the issue of, uh, that was about the uniform standardization. In my opinion, as a member of parliament for Garissa, as the one of the members have said here, there is no, I we do not understand, the, I do, or rather I do not understand the essence of the motion. In that the, as, as standardization, we already have uniforms in schools. So we need to be clear on what we want to standardize. The issue of teach, what we should discourage is that principals or school teachers asking 
to be given money to go and buy school uniforms on behalf of our children. That should be the responsibility of the parents to address that. So I do. Your time is up, Honorable Member.